Um, so this is about us implementing uh, on the Gear VR. And so, I mean, the basics are Android and mobile is just really hard. Um, we had a bunch of system integration issues that kind of started off our investigation into Perf. Uh, we ran into things like uh, Chrome IPC performance, which works amazingly well on desktop, uh, is somehow crippled on Android. Uh, what we were seeing was uh, sometimes 10 millisecond delays to make a single cross-process IPC call. Uh, so we were able to use shared memory uh, for transferring all the critical data like HMV poses. And you can kind of see here, this is an actual uh, Chrome profiler where Git frame data, which basically just computes a couple of matrices, uh, was taking about 10 milliseconds in order for it to return. Uh, you, you basically, you, that's your time. You want that time to be able to render. Uh, texture mailboxes and texture copies were adding up. Uh, so this is necessary for the separation of the uh, GPU and compositor, uh, like, or renderer and GPU processes. What we were able to do was simply dogpile the VR compositor commands on top of the existing GLES context and kind of just parallelize and pipeline some of the stuff that um, Klaus was talking about. Uh, the OVR mobile SDK kind of does really well by scheduling these special boosts. It kind of boosts the priority of both the CPU and the rendering thread. Uh, we found that this actually led to better frame rates, but then it cooked your face, so that wasn't cool. Um, so actually right now what we're trying to do is we're fixing all of our bugs so that we can re-lower those back down so the thermals don't throttle us. Uh, you'll also find Android background services are unpredictable and constantly drop your frame rate. Uh, and basically there was a lot of uh, synchronization uh, in the Chromium pipeline that we, we still have not explained. Um, and sometimes that would lead to kind of like a sporadic uh, frame skip. Uh, but we've offset that by ATW. So fixing aliasing. So Carmack talks about this all the time, so I would dedicate an entire slide to it. Uh, most Gear VR devices have fast, high quality, uh, either MSAA 4 or 2. Um, highly recommend using it. Well, it turned out that Chromium itself was unable to use it. There was a couple of bugs uh, that were blocking certain drivers that happened to be very prevalent on all Gear VR devices, including the S7. Uh, so we ripped those out. Uh, we've reported that to Chrome, said, hey, it all looks good, stuff's not crashing. Um, highly recommend that you always turn anti-alias true on for your WebGL rendering context. Uh, smaller eye buffers can compensate for that increase. And then, of course, Carmack gives an entire talk about it. Uh, and one of the things he rails on is MIT maps. But we actually uh, find that WebGL developers copy-paste the proper MIT map code 100% of the time. So good job. Uh, for WebVR content, um, we found a lot of oversized textures. 360 photos are way bigger than the Gear VR can handle. Uh, so if you're finding yourself deploying a mobile, two minutes. Uh, if you find yourself deploying a mobile, go ahead and just fix that. You know, make the textures the right size for the device that you're on. Obey all the warnings. Uh, 3GS actually was the only thing that was giving the warning here, saying it was resizing the texture down. Um, GL buffer and sub buffer data, or buffer sub data. Uh, what we found was people were using this every frame. Please stop submitting the same stuff every frame, and it was literally the same stuff. Um, you can kind of buffer everything up, and then you can just keep drawing it once it's already been transferred, you don't have to retransfer it. Uh, turning on anti-aliasing and reducing the eye buffer sizes was a, a kind of a key um, content level fix uh, for us. And then turn off preserved drawing buffer. It actually turns out that uh, this is used for mirroring samples where people want to see it in the canvas and they also want to see it in the display. But for mobile, you only have one. Uh, but there's still a backing surface for the thing you can't see, which is the canvas. So this. Uh, Basically, it requires another texture copy, which sucks, and it actually causes some GPUs to fail. So we actually found that uh, an S6 on Android M would just draw a black screen uh, and would fail. So you can actually track this code down in the, in the Chromium source uh, as well. <clears throat> uh, development tools are pretty big. Uh, so mobile deb debugging on Android is just a general challenge. Uh, lack of USB debugging through the Gear VR was the most challenging for us. You couldn't both put the phone in the Gear and debug at the same time. Um, so you can basically do that over air. Uh, you can do that through Wi-Fi. Um, and we also found that enabling the Gear VR service developer mode requires OSIGs, which web developers don't have. This is something we're going to talk to Samsung about fixing so more web devs can get into developer mode. Uh, the Chrome debugger was great. Freaking use it. You know, figure out, get all the ADB stuff out of the way, figure out how to use it. Um, and then the Snapdragon profiler is really good for looking at your graphics, um, but it's challenging because the mobile carriers don't update your GPUs, uh, drivers very often, and it works best on the Note 7, which explodes. So. Cool.